So at that point, you were signed to nothing. Well, you know, at this point, my mind is still, I got to get signed. I, I, I moved to Nashville. You know, the story goes, my, my, my family moved to Tampa. I get down there uh, for the summer breaks. And uh, my bro- it's 1990 now. My brother asked me, what would you want for your birthday this year? I said, I want studio time. That's all I want, <laughs> man. It's just an hour of studio time. Yeah. And uh, so he gives me an hour of studio time at a, at a random studio in mm-hmm. Tampa, Florida. Okay. We get down there. And uh, you remember, I, at this point, I don't know how to program nothing. I don't know how to, I, yeah. you know, I, I've got start buying records that year, 1990. Yeah. But I didn't have, you know, any type of sampler. I didn't really even know how a sampler worked back yeah. then. The, the information just was not. That's how it, it was wasn't back com- then. Yeah, it wasn't common it was, like no, that. No, One person in a city yep, might a have a sampler. Maybe. And everybody would have to go either through <laughs> that person. Yep, yep. Or you just wasn't making no music. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Well, at this time, I get there, and there's a guy who was who was the resident sampler guy. You uh-huh. know what I mean? For the school, I mean for the for the city, basically of Tampa. He also had a radio show, and uh, there was an engineer there. And the guy turned out to be a, by the, a man by the name of Kenny K. Uh-huh. And Kenny K. was a was a satellite member of Digital Underground. Unbeknownst to me, Digital Underground. Greg Jacobs, Shock G, was from Tampa. Oh, wow. And had recorded some of the Digital Underground album at this same studio, Freaks and in Industry. So oh. I, I'm sitting here, I asked the man, you know, do you know anything about rap? You know, when back then you used to have to yeah. ask the studios, and like, you don't even have done any rap before. He was like, as a matter of fact, he pulled out the two inch reels, the Freaks of <laughs> in the Industry. Wow. Two inch reels now and play. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. And I hadn't even heard it yet. The first mm. time I heard Freaks of the Industry was that time. Wow. Was in that studio, right? It's like the end of August 1990. So at that point, I was like, yo, we can do this. You know? <laughs> so I had a couple records. Because and stuff. Shock G and you do share a lot in common music. Nah, man. Which listen, is, you don't even understand. It's, it's yeah. creepy. Yeah. About me people and don't Shock know. G. <laughs> first of all, I was born 10 years to the day. Mm. Of Shock G. We have the same birthday 10 years to the day. Wow. My parents lived in Tampa at that time. I was coming home to Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chords and everything like that. You know what I mean? It, it keeps going, and I'm the, not going to sit up here and try funk. to get Yeah, I'm not going to try to get <laughs> ethereal with it. But yeah. me, and I, me, I got a real thing. You know, Shock G really fathered my style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As yep. far as putting chords on top of samples. That's mm-hmm. him. And I came in just with a similar background and heard what he did. When I heard I Get Around for the first time, you know, just a few years later, it was like, psh. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? It brought more, even when I think about that song, sometimes it just definitely, to me, as far as production-wise, you know, my jaw starts shaking because it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's one for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's when I learned about, you know, the samples got to be in the key. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The co- you got to tune the chords to the sense. And it was just my, it just all made sense. Like, wow, that's yeah. how you put musicality in this thing. You know what I mean? Mm. 